Hello, everybody. First of all, I just want to say that um, the Washington Post is not condoning me uh, showing this article in any way. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, I don't have time to, nor do I care to. Those t-shirts are so fucking trashy. I'm disgusted. They were even um, advertised to me. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the advertisement. I'm just, I'm sorry about them. I was looking up Smarf t-shirts on, um, on, um, Red bubble, that's why those are showing up for me, but that's really disgusting. Okay, so this woman, this woman, right here, let's look at her quickly, uh, is a raging liberal law, and because I've listened to the witch trials of J.K. Rowling, I just want to say that they've inspired me to be a little bit kinder to people like this, but only a little bit, okay? Because a lot of people actually deserve ridicule, and a lot of people are not getting ridiculed, and a lot of people are being, um, how do I say this? They're being puppets. Uh, they're being overly, they coddle trans trenders. Okay, let's just put it that way. They coddle trans trenders. Not only do they coddle trans trenders, they coddle themselves. Okay, so this woman is just boohooing all day and night about how hard it is to listen to the witch trials of J.K. Rowling. I've almost finished the whole thing. I don't know if there are going to be more episodes, but um, I think there are seven or eight episodes. And uh, this woman, Megan Phelps Roper, who is a former member of the Westboro Baptist Church, uh, really goes into depth about J.K. Rowling and goes into depth about Tumblr and goes into depth about a lot of things. Um, and now I can't find the excerpt that I wanted to go to. I'll find it. Hold on. But um, if sex isn't real, the lived reality of women is globally erased, she tweeted. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. No fucking shit. What's your name? What is her name? I forgot. Hold on. Sorry. No shit, Monica Hesse. Like, I don't understand why women are getting mad about these basic fucking facts that J.K. Rowling is saying. And I have actually have a problem with the podcast, okay? I have a problem with the witch trials of J.K. Rowling because it's tranny pandering, but I digress. So, if sex isn't real, the lived reality of women is globally erased. She tweeted in the summer of 2020 as part of a threat protesting gender neutral phrasing related to menstruation. Can you believe that that's where we are as a society? I refuse to believe it. I refuse to accept it. I'm not accepting it. I will never accept it. Protesting, just someone thinking that protesting gender neutral phrasing related to menstruation is an okay thing to say. That's like saying, um, what is that like saying? I don't even know what that's like saying. I don't know that I can come up with an adequate metaphor at this moment, but um, that is insanity. Like, oh my word. Okay, so I was trying to get back to this one excerpt that I saw, but this is JK Rowling transphobic? Okay, um, I, I saw this one excerpt and, okay, okay. Oh, she's using cisgender. Hold on, let's just read this paragraph. I will dissect Rowling's every tweet or retweet of the past three years. <clears throat> Glamour Magazine has a good general rundown if you're interested, but I'll fast forward a bit to say that Rowling's Twitter account in the past few months has returned multiple times to one particular British case a transgender woman who was convicted of rape before she transitioned and who was now set to be transferred to a women's prison. I actually realized that I've been saying it's not J.K. Rowling, it's J.K. Rowling, because I ain't British, so it's Rowling. Rowling's attention to this story appeared to be in service to a broader argument that is grievously dangerous for cisgender women to have to share, that it is grievously dangerous for cisgender women to have to share spaces with transgender women. Oh my word. I just, I truly, 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 truly want to shake and slap these handmaidens. I know that's not the kind thing to do. I know that's not the politically correct thing to do. To do. And me saying that, me saying I want to shake and slap these women is not me doing that.
Okay, let's just remember that. I do want to shake and slap these women, though, because I feel like they deserve it. Okay, and I am against spanking as far as punishing children goes. I really am. But that's not in my control. And these women who are saying this handmaidenry shit, like, like making light. This woman just made light of the fact that a biological male is getting put in a women's prison. And she also used the term cisgender. Like, ho, do you fucking think I have time for this? I don't. No one does. We are here in the West twiddling our thumbs, talking about what a woman is. Meanwhile, girls in Africa or any other fucking country or in my own country, in my own city right now are being sold to sex traffickers. But you want to fucking say, oh, cisgender women, oh, transgender women in prisons. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you? She's not. She's not. She's serious. I just really wanted to find this one small thing that I now can't find. And it's exhausting because the... Oh, 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 I think I found it. Okay, I found it. Can it really be true, as the episode implies, that legions of teenagers began identifying outside of the gender binary solely because the social media platform Tumblr gave them profile options beyond male and female? Is it common for transgender rights activists to virulently protest feminine's conferences as the podcast asserts? Okay, we're going to get to Tumblr in, in one moment. To answer that last question, you would have to already know because the podcast won't tell you that the feminist, in quotes, conferences protested by trans trender rights activists advocates are typically gatherings that specifically exclude transgender women from the umbrella of the feminist movement. You would have to know that there are many feminist organizations and individual feminists such as myself, I forgot her first name, Hesse, who find this exclusion unconscionable that transgender women don't want to take down feminism. They want to be a part of it. Moron, Roe v. Wade got overturned in the United States of America. And that is largely due to the fact, not because of pro-liars. It is not because of pro-life people. Okay? Hot take. That's actually not the reason. The reason it got overturned is because dipshits like you got on your knees, opened your mouth, and tried to suck di- and started sucking the dick of transgenderism. You started sucking the dick of trans women. That is really vulgar, okay? I am being extremely, extremely exaggerating here, but that's what's going on. You said, I want to be submissive to transgender women. This is like, okay, okay, I know I get really heated about this, but really and truly, the fact that left-wing women, liberal women, traditionally liberal women, can no longer define a woman by her biological sex is to blame for Roe v. Wade getting overturned. Okay? Obviously, there are other parties at fault here, too. There are other people at fault here, too. But this would not have happened if liberal women were able to define what a woman is by her biological sex, which is a fact, which is provable. I don't know if you all know this, but people use the term evidence incorrectly. Okay, people say the word evidence when they actually mean to say proof or fact. Okay, Um, I'm trying to think of an example. I think that you all can tell that I'm me, right? I am Leah TV right now speaking to you. You're watching this video, it's me. And I think you can prove it. Okay, you actually can prove it because you can you can come to my house, you can look at my phone, and you can find this recorded video on my phone and on no one else's phone. Could another person imitate me 
and and make a similar video to this could they do a very convincing job yeah they most certainly could but the proof that this is me is on my phone okay that is proof and it's a fact and you can prove it all right so what annoys me so much what annoys me a lot about the podcast is that she she's kind of using megan phelps roper is kind of using liberal law language when she's saying oh some people believe that sex is real some people don't believe that transgender women are women yeah i <laughs> um it's not that i don't believe that it's that it's a provable fact that that's not true it's not evidence there isn't evidence to suggest it is a fact okay kind of forgot where i was going with this oh okay so yeah thank you so much dumb shit liberal all handmaidens of america for seeing to it that roe v wade got overturned go to bit shoot and watch my video on how to induce miscarriage you're welcome let's just talk about this for a minute because we're already here i wonder and i'm being serious about this i wonder if american women even deserve the right to abortion i don't like saying that i don't like that those words came out of my mouth okay i don't but i really do wonder that when when we elected trumpkin pumpkin to be president of the united states of america i cried and i freaked out okay i legitimately freaked out but then i thought about it for a while and i was like you know what this is what we deserve this is where we are this is what we deserve this is where we've gotten period okay so so we need to everyone needs to look at the facts surrounding this overturn of roe v wade everyone needs to look at the facts surrounding trans trenderism okay this woman was talking about tumblr can it really be true as the episode implies that legions of teenagers began identifying outside of the gender binary solely because of social media from tumblr to the profile option to be around me yes yes i i love when people talk about this and they don't know what they're talking about because they weren't there guess what poe i was there I was fucking there, okay? I was right the fuck there when Tumblr, when I was addicted to Tumblr, okay? I was a liberal all handmaiden, okay? I was all up in this stupid ass cold because it was on the internet and it was fun and I had time on my hands, baby, okay? So I got indoctrinated into this cult. I was in it. I was a part of it. Thanks be to God I wasn't stupid enough or messed up enough to change my gender try to change my gender i didn't even experiment with it okay i didn't even put um i, I just i never ever 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 wanted to be trans trender i never ever 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 wanted to pretend to be male i was all for everyone else who wanted to do it i was a, a trans trender rights soldier okay i myself was not trans though i was there when a lot of the things that were discussed in this podcast and in this article were happening in real time. And the answer is yes. Tumblr was a social contagion. And the internet was a social contagion. Okay? The internet is new. We have access to the internet in ways that people in 1995 and never ever ever would have anticipated we have children who have cell phones we have children who have access to the internet 24 hours of the day on a small computer that is handheld okay mm. i'm sorry i'm getting really heated and i feel like this is just going all kinds of different directions but i'm just saying i was here i was there I fell victim to it. Luckily, I was woman enough and had a working brain that got me to the point where I stopped believing that eventually. But I had all kinds of friends that were all up in this trans trend. I, I Like I said, I was all up in the trans trend. And going back to a point I made a minute ago is that I wonder if women deserve the right to abortion in the United States. 
okay and I don't like saying that but women know next to nothing about pregnancy they know next to nothing about ovulation they know next to nothing about birth okay all I would say that that's the standard for all American women obviously I'm very knowledgeable about it y'all can go scroll back and look at my videos okay I actually studied under a woman who was a midwife for 33 years all right so I know what I'm talking about, okay? But <sighs> I'm just saying that American women are so willfully ignorant of something like their own bodies. They're bodily illiterate. They do not teach body literacy. We have these women who put themselves into bad situations, who, who become pregnant, who um, have too many kids who um, don't aren't mindful about who they reproduce with, and that's why I question whether or not we deserve the right to abortion. But hey, look where we are now, all right? Look where we are now. In certain states, it will always be legal. Um, you can always hit me up on here. If you need help inducing miscarriage, I will always be here. You can always go to my, my How to Induce Miscarriage Bit Shoot video, all right? And you can always learn about your own body and how it works. Now I've gotten on this giant fucking tangent about abortion because thanks to transgenderism and thanks to the fervor that it's created, women have become even more fucking stupid about our bodies and um, allowed this kind of insanity. And now Roe v. Wade is overturned thanks to transgenderism handmaidenry. So think about that, Hesse. Okay. This was not even my point. Okay, I wanted to get to this. You would have to know that there are many feminist organizations and individual feminists such as myself who find this exclusion unconscionable. That transgender women don't want to take down feminism. They want to be a part of it. They've already taken it down, you dumb shit. They have already ruined it, you fucking stupid handmaiden. We're already there. And this is largely a reason why I barely want to call myself a feminist. I don't call myself a feminist for lack of a better term. And this is why I've even moved on from radical feminism because of lack of action that those women have. Okay. So <laughs> I am just never going to not be shocked at women who write articles like this. I am just never going to not be shocked that women have the audacity to say something like that transgender women don't want to take down feminism. They want to be a part of it. They've taken it down. It has been down. Trans trender women infiltrated feminism, infiltrated women's spaces, infiltrated women as a class of people a long time ago, and all these handmaidens were too submissive, were too passive, or maybe just too stupid to see it. And of course they allowed it. They facilitated it. You know what? I'm, I, I take accountability there. Okay. That's, in all seriousness, it's partially my fault. Because like I've said 100 million times, probably in this video alone, I was a handmaiden. All right? I was, I just said, I was a trans trender rights warrior. I did get upset with people for misgendering the transes and tell them off and say mean shit to them. I did that. All right? And I own up to it. Okay? That was wrong of me. That was something I never should have done. But I did it, it's over with, and I no longer do it. Okay? And... <laughs> oh my god, let's just move on. This is so frustrating to me. Listening to the witch trials of J.K. Rowling is exhausting. It's exhausting because it requires constant vigilance. And it's exhausting because the phrase, CONSTANT VIGILANCE, I've just realized. Entered my own lexicon via Mad-Eye Moody, a beloved Harry Potter character, because Rowling is a brilliant and beloved storyteller who is astonishingly good, astonishingly good at entering lexicons, manipulating language, and telling fantasy stories. It's how she became famous. It's why events surrounding J. 
surrounding Rowling these past few years have felt like a god-awful mess. Is J.K. Rowling transphobic? That's why I was listening to the podcast to begin with. It promised that J.K. Rowling would speak with unprecedented candor and depth about the controversy surrounding her from book bans to debates on gender and sex. Since 2020, Rowling's status as a celebrated liberal and literary icon has taken a nosedive because of tweets and references that supports that supporters of trans rights view as transphobic, but that Rowling says are merely trying to protect women and girls. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock, they are. Why the fuck are there four trans girls? Why the fuck are there four TIFFs, trans-identified females, to every one trans-identified male as teens? Why the fuck is rapid onset gender dysphoria a thing? Why the fuck are so many girls transitioning? You tell me, bitch. Is it because of misogyny? Is it because women around them are bad examples? Is it because they fell into an internet cult? Is it all of the above? Is it because handmaidens like you are more worried about, about pandering to men who want to be women than you are about real women? Yes, that is why. If sex... Okay, that's I already read that. She followed it up with a lengthy blog post lamenting the new trans activism and questioning whether young people were identifying as trans because they've been persuaded by a social fad rather than in a... They have. They have. Okay, a big, big, big issue I have with the podcast, with the Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling, is, is that it is... It's... How do I say this? I'm thinking... I find it a little bit too respectful of trans identities. Honestly. Now listen. I know it is a fact that every single human being on the planet deserves respect. Every single... Okay, well maybe that's not true because I just thought of sex traffickers, but... People deserve respect. Generally. Okay? Okay. I forgot what I was saying. People deserve respect. Okay? Trans people deserve respect. Even though I don't agree with their lifestyle, they deserve respect. That's a fact. Okay? Um, but me not respecting your quote-unquote preferred pronouns, me calling you by your biological sex pronouns isn't me disrespecting you. It's actually me respecting you. I'm not going along with your stupid psychotic fantasy that you're not your biological sex. I'm not doing that because I'm not coddling you. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Ain't doing it, fam. And I'm not sorry. Okay? You can think that's disrespectful, but it's not. Or you know what, you can fe- you can think it's disrespectful, you can feel it as disrespectful, and you can therefore not like me. By all means, go ahead. Hate me. Hate me about it. That's fine. Um, but it's a fact. You are your biological sex, and there's nothing that anyone can do to change that. And something that I wish people would do is look at these transgender people in the eye and say, you are your biological sex no matter what you do. You can get surgeries to appear more like your desired sex, you can take hormones to appear more like your desired sex, but at the end of the day, you will never change your biological sex because that's physically impossible. So why don't you just embrace who you are and get the fuck over it? I kind of want to keep going with this, even though it's so long. That would have been a good ending, but here we are. Okay. <laughs> Whether young people were identifying as trans because they've been persuaded by social fads rather than innate identity. Okay, again, moron. Why the fuck has there been a 400% increase in trans transgenderism in the last five years, 10 years? Okay? Like, 20 years ago, you saw almost zero children with gender dysphoria. And today, there's a 400% increase from that. That should be concerning to anyone with a working brain. I guess you don't have a working brain. She said the transgender rights movement offered cover to predators like few before it. I saw... A meme or, or a, a thing on, on Instagram back when I was still on Instagram. And I'm going to see if I can word this how it was worded. It was just text. It wasn't, there wasn't a photo, but it was a text and it said, 
only one group of people benefits from adults who never developed physically or sexually. Only one. That group is pedophiles. That group is child predators. That is the group benefiting from children going on puberty blockers and never developing sexually. Okay? I know that's not what people want to hear. I know that that's disturbing, but that's the fact of the matter. Okay, she said the transgender rights movement offered to cover to predators like few before it. Yeah, actually, it, it, do, it does, and it did, and it will, as long as it continues. Um, I talk a lot about, or I have talked a lot about, mentioned a lot about trans, about Tim predators, because there are Tim predators. There are men pretending to be women who specifically do prey on women, right? But there are also women. I've heard of um trans of tiffs being sexually predatory towards even other tiffs or towards other women i have and th this is a, this is a a pretty common phenomenon let me just say most trans trenders actually experience sexual abuse as children and a lot of people who experience sexual abuse as children that is extreme tend to repeat it to other people that's not that's not by any means uh, um, a rule that's I'm just saying that a lot of people who are sexually messed with as children grow up to then sexually mess with other children okay that's that's not a secret um, she began retweeting random accounts that said things such as my grandmother had the right to get an abortion to female only spaces and did not feel any social pressure to use a rapist's preferred pronouns. For some reason, 60 plus years later, I do not have any of these. So you just are going to read a statement like that and dismiss it and say that she began retweeting random accounts okay i didn't even read all of this i'm sorry i i just i wanted to talk about this because it was so crazy i won't dissect railings every tweet or retweet of the past three years grand or did i read this already Rowling, Rowling's Twitter account in the past few months has returned multiple times to one particular British case. Okay, I think I did read this. I did read that. Anyway, this article is really dumb, and this article is propaganda for transgenderism, and it's on the Washington Post. Um, I didn't fact check on this, but I believe it. Uh, Back in the day when newspapers were a common thing and plenty of people read the newspaper, uh, newspaper articles were actually at like a fifth grade reading level if you really broke it down. And apparently today, uh, articles like this are at like a third grade reading level. I'm not saying this is a third grade reading level. I'm just saying that our, our reading comprehension as a society has, has digressed. I think that's pretty serious and scary. Is Jake Aroni transphobic? Journalism is a business for sticklers. Reporters are discouraged from calling anyone transphobic or homophobic or racist because doing so requires knowing what's in their hearts when the only thing we can know with certainty is what comes out of their mouths. So what can I say is that what I can say is that what comes out of her mouth or goes onto her Twitter account has a fuzzy aura of harmful rhetoric. Okay, no, it fucking doesn't. No, it absolutely fucking does not. This is... Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, we're going to do a, a religious uh, comparison here. Because this... Because trans, the trans trend, the trans uh, phenomenon is a religion. It's a cult. It's a dangerous cult. Um, but I'm just going to compare it to a religion. So, say... Say I was as famous as JK, all right? 
Or say we have a someone who is close to as famous as JK. And he or she gets on Twitter and says, I truly believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life, and the only way you're going to get to heaven and have a good life is by being a Christian. And I'm not condemning other religions. People are, feel, are free to practice other religions, but I truly believe that the only right one is Christianity. One, that person has the right to say that. Two, they outrightly said that they're not criticizing other religions. They're also not going to stop other people from having other religions. You are allowed to say your beliefs, even if other people don't agree with them, even if it's a hot take, even if someone wants to show up and say, hey, Christianity isn't true at all, here's why. That's allowed, right? I'm confused here because this is the level that that J.K. Rowling's tweet was on. Okay, whatever she said, she has never said, I hate trans people. She has never said trans people deserve death. She has never said, um, I don't believe in trans trenderism. I think she's sort of implied it. But I don't believe in veganism, and that's not stopping anyone from being vegan. What else don't I believe in? I'm not really into uh, juggalos. What the fuck is that? Insane clown posse shit? I'm not into that. And I would never participate in it, but that doesn't change the fact that it's real. Okay, I'm running out of steam here. I'm sorry, everyone. This is getting crazy. Okay, uh has a fuzzy aura of harmful rhetoric. Okay, no, it fucking doesn't. I wish people would stop saying this because it's just not true. It is just not true. She's, she's, people aren't taking into account the fact that J.K. Rowling isn't 20 years old. Okay, I, I, unfortunately, 20 year olds have an excuse for being so indoctrinated into the trans cult because they were likely indoctrinated into it starting as, very young children and they're also 20 years old okay their brains are not developed so i get it all right jk rowling is in her 50s i'm pretty sure um yeah she's in her 50s people are not taking into account her age here they're not taking into account her her wisdom here okay people are also not taking into account my wisdom here because i was in the trans cult for eight whole years starting when i was 15. right all right all right mate so I fucking know what I'm talking about. I experienced it firsthand. I have knowledge about it that other people do not have. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart, my true fans here, for listening to me and being a fan of mine and agreeing with me. I really do. Thank you. Thank you so much. But her... Tweets do not have a fuzzy aura of harmful rhetoric, all right? Rowling is talking about basic facts that anyone can prove. I can actually prove that you're male or female without taking your clothes off by looking at you and speaking to you. It's not hard. We are hardwired to identify another person's sex. We are hardwired to identify other people's sexes, plural. Okay? And just because someone might actually be DSD or VSD, I actually can tell when someone actually is. It's not hard for me. I have a trained eye like that. I just know. Um, but when someone is trend trender, that's also not hard for me to fucking see. And just because you're mad that other people aren't going along with the... Um, with the fantasy, with the delusion, doesn't give you, it's just, just because you're mad about that doesn't change the facts, okay? And the fact of the matter is, is that transgenderism is in fact a social contagion. It is in fact a dangerous cult. It is in fact wrecking our society. You know what, if you're a biological male and I've, oh my God, I'm so sick of how many times I've said this, but I'll say it again. If you're a biological male and you're romantically inclined, 
if you even if you're romantically inclined towards towards women, I don't even care who you're interested in romantically. If you're a biological male and you want to go by Jessica and wear dresses and and makeup and and wigs for the rest of your life, go right the fuck ahead, Jessica. Do you have fun? That doesn't make you a woman. That doesn't make you an actual woman. I have a friend who's 12 years older than me, and so she was like a teen in the in the early 90s okay she was she was a teen 20s and 90s okay and she said that at that point there there were transgender women there were trans women i don't know that i don't think they called them trans women at the time but there she knew she knew of people of biological males who who wore quote unquote women's clothing right and they did their own thing and they they didn't actually call themselves women they weren't actually trying to be women maybe they hung out with women you know maybe all their friends were women maybe they were gay men maybe they wanted to be a woman but they did not say that they were women they were like yep i'm a man (laughs) yep i'm a biological male (laughs) like that's changed now because people are falling for this stupid ass religion and they done have been and it gotta stop Okay, but taken as a whole, her body of communication on the issues, such as things she chooses to retweet, and provocative language she, the provocative language she uses while doing so, cumulatively, it sucks. Sweetheart, you fucking try to write for the Washington Post? Um, 30 years ago, you're getting fired for that shit. Unless this was an opinion piece. Okay? Cumulatively, it sucks? That's really where we are with journalism? Okay. (laughs) Okay. No, cumulatively, you don't like it. Cumulatively, you don't understand that you're in this fucking cult and that you're promoting insanity. You do not understand that fact. I think I just lost my place, but I... Don't know if I can keep doing this forever. Okay, I read that already. Okay, whatever. If you claim that JK, did I really, did I read this already? I think I skipped that part. Cumulatively, it sucks. Your communications have implicitly completed being trans with being a predator. No, they haven't. Her communications have made unsupported claims about transitioning and detransitioning and what demographics are transitioning. Okay, um, no, she hasn't. <laughs> she looked that up, you dumb bitch. Uh, and it's not hard to see either. And actually, I don't... Okay, here's another problem I have with, um, with the podcast is they act like transgenderism is a legitimate lifestyle choice. Um, it ain't. It's really not. Okay, listen. Uh, it's legal in my state for me to be topless on the beach. It's legal in my state for me to be topless in public. Okay? So I do it sometimes, actually. I am topless when I go to the beach. All right? Uh, I know that trans men tiffs. Transgenderism is just a giant tangent that's just totally wrong. Like, it, it's weirdly, like, sort of addressing some sexist issues we have, but not actually. Like, the only way for women to be legally topless in a lot of states is for them to remove their breasts. I don't think that's a good system. That's actually really bad. That's not a good way to go. Okay. Her can- okay, blah, 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 blah. For ex- referencing, for example, a heavily flawed 2018 study about rapid onset gender dysphoria. It's not heavily flawed, you dumb bitch. It's fucking real. I, oh my god. Okay. But communications have implied that many trans men are confused. They are. And that some trans women are actually just dangerous. Men drag. That's what I was saying. I was saying a second ago that the podcast honors transgenderism too much. The podcast is acting like transgenderism is a legitimate life choice and it's not. Okay, it isn't. And and the trans trend is a trans trend, like I keep fucking saying. Like I keep fucking saying. Right? It's a trend. Okay? It is a religion. 
it's a fad. We got all these other fads too. We got all these other uh, popular things that people are all into for a little while and then eventually they fall by the wayside and no one cares anymore. That's what's going to happen with transgenderism, quote me, once we get out of this fucking goddamn internet obsession. A communications have implied that many trans men are confused and some trans women are actually just dangerous men in drag. Referring to female prisoners being terrified of being locked up with male rapists, murderers, and domestic abusers. Cunt. 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 Hesse. What the fuck is her name? I keep forgetting. Sorry, I'm going to lose my place again. Monica Hesse. Let me tell you about the time I went into a prison full of men. I was in a class when I was in college called, I forgot what it was called, but it was about prison. It was about prison culture. Okay, it was a sociology class because I'm a sociology major, honey. I don't know what kind of major you are, but (laughs) I'm going to go ahead and guess it wasn't sociology, but I digress. My instructor, my professor, is actually like a really known guy who who writes about um, prison culture and that kind of thing because there is a prison culture. There's sociology within prisons, all right? So we were able to visit uh, prison, all right? I had never been to a prison. No one in my family has ever been incarcerated. Um, but we went on a little field trip to this prison, okay? And when I went there, it was all men. This is a men's prison. This is a men's facility. It was a, it was a minimum security prison, but it was still a prison, okay? And all the men who were there um, had four years or less on their sentence and I don't think a lot of them I don't know that any of them had committed violent crimes but I digress okay so we went there and I had no idea how much my instincts were going to kick in when I went there okay these men were not used to seeing women there were other women in my class they had some women staff members that there there were women staff members showing us around but um they see them every day. You know, those are those are those are commonplace women that are there all the time. Uh, they had not seen a beautiful woman like me in a long time, and there were other beautiful women in my class. Okay, I am telling you, the instincts kicked in with me more than I was ever aware. Like I didn't even know I had these instincts. Immediately when we got in there, I started sweating because I was we were entirely surrounded by men, and even though this was a minimum security prison, there could have been a coup that day. Okay. It could have happened, right? And that's that's extreme thinking, but it is possible, right? So immediately when we got in there, I right the fuck away without thinking, got right next to the guys in my class who were former Marines. It was not a conscious thought to me. I just like got right next to them because I knew that they would protect me if anything were to happen, okay? That is a hardwired instinct on my part. All right. And obviously you've never even visited a prison, but these men, these, these men who were imprisoned, right? These prisoners, they weren't doing anything to suggest that they were going to prey upon me or my classmates. They were doing nothing of the sort. They were excited to see us because it's exciting to see new people when, when you, when you see the same people every day and you're in prison. Um, I think I didn't hear this, but one of them apparently made an inappropriate comment about me and my, my classmate, but that's sort of to be expected. And it was only a comment, okay? Um, I didn't hear it at the time because I I wasn't really focused on listening to to other people. But I'm just saying, being in a prison is a different fucking experience than living normal life. And being a woman in prison, incarcerated, is a different fucking experience than walking around at the mall. At the the trendy spot in your area, at your university, anywhere. I don't think people realize, I know that people do not realize the gravity of being in prison, period. Forget about trans trenders being there. There are guards that prey upon women. Women prey upon other women, okay? But I am just beyond disgusted and frustrated that handmaidens like this make light 
of biological males being put into women's prisons. Monica Hesse, you are a dumb bitch. Okay, that is rude of me. That's not cool of me. Um, I'm being extremely uncouth by saying that shit to her by posting that on the internet, but I stand by it and I will until I die. Monica Hesse, you are a pathetic handmaiden who capes for men over your own biological sex, over your own class of people, women. And I feel sorry for you. And I feel sorry for other women who have to fucking deal with you. And I feel sorry that I'm even reading this article. Why the fuck are you a published journalist in a, in a fucking former newspaper like the Washington Post when you say this shit? You dumb bitch. You handmaiden, fucking tranny pandering, tranny dick sucking hoe. Obviously, I have an affinity for getting fired up like this. Obviously, I have an affinity for, for saying rude things like this to people, okay? But I don't think they're going to listen any other way. They done hadn't been listening. They have not been listening the last 10 fucking years. I've been saying this shit. Do you think I like yelling at handmaidens? Do you think I like saying that they're stupid? Do you think I like saying that I want to shake them and slap them? I don't. I don't. I wish that these women had the brain capacity to actually think about what they're saying and look at it objectively. I wish that these women understood that by tranny pandering, they're betraying their own mothers, they're betraying themselves, they're betraying their friends, they're betraying their sisters, they're betraying their daughters, they're betraying the future girls who will run the world, okay? You are making it worse. I don't know how else to put it. She has retweeted an article from an online magazine called Redux, which bills itself as feminist news and opinion. But what kind of feminist news site has zero articles on fair pay or reproductive rights and only articles about transgender people who have allegedly committed crimes? Maybe one that actually cares about women, Monica Hesse. These trends, this trans trend has women in a chokehold and they're cheering it on. The women in the said chokeholds are cheering it on, being like, yeah, slay queen. Yeah, you go. Yeah, pretend to be a woman like me. I'm shouting from every rooftop that this is dangerous. I have been. I'm shouting from every rooftop that this is not okay. I'm shouting from every rooftop for women to care about this and to listen and to understand that their actions have really serious consequences like Roe v. Wade being overturned. But dumb bitches like you, Monica Hesse, dumb handmaidens like you, Monica Hesse, don't want to listen. If she knows and loves trans people, I'm wondering why she doesn't dedicate equal space to retweeting articles where trans folks are the heroes, not the villains of the story. Why are people acting like J.K. Rowling is some kind of perfect human being, perfect saint? Like, yeah, she has millions, kajillions of followers, but does that make her not a human being? People are, are acting like she's some kind of god. She is a woman who wrote popular children's books. Chill out. Sorry she's not doing everything you want her to do. You know, I heard a lot of dumb shits during COVID be like, why is J.K. Rowling tweeting about this now during COVID? Why the fuck not? Do we have, do we have rules about what we can and cannot tweet about during a pandemic? No. Or the victims of violent crime, as they disproportionately are rather than the perpetrators. Oh my God, Monica, you are so fucking dumb. Are you trying to be dumb? Are you trying to be stupid? I think she is. Women suffer more violence at the hands of men on an hourly basis, on a minutely basis, on a daily basis 
than do trans women. Obviously, trans women do experience violence from, guess who, men. Men inflict violence upon women, and men inflict violence upon trans women. And if you could acknowledge biological sex, maybe you could add one plus one. Rowling's tweets are exhausting. <laughs> Sweetheart, your article is even more exhausting. Rowling tweets are exhausting. They're exhausting because they require constant vigilance, because they are not screaming out obviously obvious bigotry, a la I hate trans people. What? Rather, they are whispering a curated, plausible deniability, the kind that purports to be just asking reasonable questions with simple answers. Oh my god, no, they're fucking not. Monica, this is why I'm asking you if you're trying to be dumb. She's stating basic facts and you're here, like, picking it apart like some kind of goddamn Indiana Jones code. Are you fucking kidding me? She's saying basic facts. She's saying gravity is real. She's saying car accidents are dangerous. She's saying don't put your hand in fire. And you're here being like, she's transphobic. She's putting your hand in firephobic. Sorry, now I'm reading this. But rolling tweets on that particular news story requires getting on the weird weeds about a single high profile message health case. Beep, 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 beep. I think I'm done with this. Um, this is a stupid ass article. I'll try to leave a fucking link or whatever the fuck. Because Rowling needs to be questioned rigorously. She's a talented enough writer to know exactly what she's saying, exactly how it's landing. She's a talented enough writer to know exactly how to thread needle after needle so her supporters can claim there's nothing to see there and her critics get exhausted. <laughs> you're not a talented writer, Monica Hesse. Actually, you're okay, but your opinions are clearly fucking whack. You on the crazy train, baby. Get off of it. There's plenty to see there. There's plenty to question. The point of all this isn't that Rowling needs to be burned at the stake. The point is that there is heat here and it needs to be felt. Yeah, by you. By you. By you. By you. By you. Gender is not a thing. Gender is a religious belief. What if, what if we... <laughs> okay, this isn't a good example, but I'm trying my best. What if we classified people by their beliefs as frequently as people misuse the word gender okay just just to be easy here going back to religion what if we classified people by christian or not christian what if we classified people by going to heaven or not going to heaven based on a christian belief that would be really outrageous that would be totally nonsensical and that would not make sense right because even if we did that you could easily have people claiming to be the right thing or the wrong thing and all they would have to do is say i'm not a i'm a christian or i'm not a christian all they would have to do is say oh yeah i believe in jesus or oh yeah i'm a heaven goer that's all they would have to do. People are misusing the word gender. People misuse the word gender all the fucking time and it drives me up a wall, okay? It drives me crazy. Who frequently writes about gender and its impact on society. We need to stop using the word gender unless you're learning a language in which there are gendered um, articles, okay? <laughs> Because gender does not apply to human beings. There is only sex. And there is male. And there is female. And that is not going to change. Thank you. Bye.